Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. My name is Madeline from Knitting House Square and today I have another knitting tutorial for you. So today's video was one that was requested and what it is, is it's knitting socks on the nine inch circular knitted needles. So what typically when you knit socks, you either have to do it with double pointed needles, right? Where you have like three or four in a round and you keep on switching them out as you go around or you can use the magic loop technique. What is cool about this third option, these nine inch circulars, is that you essentially just keep on knitting round after round on these super tiny knitting needles. So it makes it a fun way to knit socks. So what I'm gonna take you through in this video today is a simple sock pattern using these nine inch circulars. So what we're gonna start off with is these ones are knit cuff down to the toe. So we're gonna cast on, join in the round, work the ribbing portion for the cuff, then just plain stocking up for the leg. I'm gonna show you how to do a heel, still on the nine inch circular, so you don't need to switch to anything. We're gonna add in our heel, knit all the way up through the foot. Then lastly, this is the only part I've never been able to figure out, not on the circular. So I do do my toe using magic loop. Again, if you prefer using double pointed knitting needles for the toe, you could do that method as well. So that is each one of the steps I'm gonna be taking you through in this video today. So down in the description box, you're gonna find a few things. So first, you're gonna find each one of the video breakpoints. That way you can fast forward or rewind any specific part of the video that you're looking for. So for example, if you're just here to see how I put the heel in using the nine inch circulars, that video timestamp will be down below. You're also gonna find the written PDF version of this pattern that I used to knit these exact socks. Also, you're gonna find links to all the materials I used, including these exact nine inch circulars that I purchased. So if you're new to my channel, don't forget to hit that red subscribe button, that way you stay up to date on all my new videos, and let's get started. First starting off the knitting needle I'm using, so this is a 9 inch circular knitting needle, and the size knitting needle that I typically knit my socks on is a US Zero. So I picked this knitting needle up off of Amazon, I'll be sure to link the exact one I have down below. So for the majority of this project, I'm going to try and do everything on this knitting needle, the only place I haven't been able to successfully do on one of these smaller knitting needles is the toe. So I'm able to do the cuff, the heel, and all the way up through the foot. It was just when it came to these toe decreases that I had to switch to knitting needles. For those toe decreases, I'm going to knit those using Magic Loop on a longer cord. So here again, I have a US Zero knitting needle, and this one's probably about a 40 inch cord. These ones are leaky knitting needles. So I'll link these ones down below as well. So first let's talk about the type of sock we're knitting. So in this video tutorial, I'm gonna be taking you through a cuff down sock. So we're gonna go from the cuff down to the toe. And where I found that these knitting needles work best is actually not with any sort of pattern in a sock. It's when you're just knitting round after round of plain stockinette. So for example, in these socks right here, this were one of the sample socks I knit. So these ones, I did a three by one rib all the way through the leg of the sock and then across the top of the foot. I actually didn't find the purl stitches to be that easy to do on these circular knitting needles. So what I'm gonna show you in this video instead is just a plain stockinette knit sock where we just knit round after round, of course, except for the cuff, we'll still have ribbing up there. So on these smaller knitting needles, we're gonna cast on, knit all the way through the leg, work our heel, work all the way up through the foot. Then we're gonna to switch to the other knitting needles for the tail. Now when we cast on, I'm gonna cast on with a solid color here. I'm gonna cast on however many stitches I typically would for a sock. So for me, that's 68. And I like to use a stretchier cast on method for my socks. So here I'm gonna be using the long tail cast on. Now when I actually begin casting on my stitches, I can cast on either knitting needle point, it doesn't matter. The only place we're gonna start paying attention to that is when we first start knitting in the round. So first, I'm just gonna cast on all of my stitches onto either one of my knitting needle points and keep on sliding them towards the other point as I go along. And 
and it can be a little bit tricky to hold on to the knitting needle while you're casting on because there isn't much room. So I'm basically grabbing onto the base of this knitting needle like as far back as I can go before I get to the cord and that's where I'm holding it as I'm casting on. Now I finished casting on and I just double counted my stitches to make sure I did have that 68 number that I was going for. And for this next step, we're going to need a really thin stitch marker. So what I mean by that is like you want the thickness of the stitch marker to be thinner than your yarn. That way you don't end up with any gaps at the beginning of your round as you go all the way around the sock. If you use a stitch marker that's too large, it's basically going to stretch out the distance in between your last stitch of one round and the first stitch of the next round. So try and find one that's really round or really thin. These metal ones work great. And then real quick, I'm also just going to wrap up my tail here so that I don't accidentally start knitting with it. Okay. Now when I pick up my knitting needles, the way I'm going to pick them up is I'm going to have my knitting needle with my working yarn coming out of it in my right hand, my knitting needle with no working yarn in my left hand, and now I'm just going to stretch out my stitches so that they go up towards each one of those knitting needle points. Now I want to position, kind of like fold the two knitting needles in towards the center. So when I look at my work, I have my working yarn still coming out of that right knitting needle. Then I have my left knitting needle over here, no yarn coming out of it. And now it's kind of like I can touch those two knitting needle points and it forms a circle. That's exactly what we want. And now I'm just going to check real quick that my work isn't twisted. Okay, all my pearl bumps or all my cast on bumps are going down towards the table. So now I'm going to put on my stitch marker onto my right knitting needle. Now one last thing before I knit that first stitch that I wanted to mention. So I have my stitch marker over here on my right knitting needle. That's my yarn tail. It's kind of getting in the way right there. And then my working yarn is coming out further away from me, right? So it kind of looks like it's coming out the back of that cast on stitch. That's exactly what I want so I don't end up with a yarn over as my first stitch. So now I'm going to take my right knitting needle or the one with the working yarn and I'm going to go right into the first stitch on my left knitting needle as if to knit it. Wrap my yarn around, pull through, slide the stitch off. Now I've knit that first stitch of the round. Now I work ribbing for my cuff, so I'm going to do knit one, bring my yarn to the front, purl one. Yarn back, knit one. And I'm going to keep on going, knit one, purl one, all the way across this round until I get back over to that stitch marker. Now in these first few rounds, as you go round two, you likely will have to start sliding the stitches from the right over towards the left, just to kind of keep it going in a circle. So every, probably about every 10 stitches or so, I slide it over a bit. I'm just finishing this first round, so now I'm just going to pass the stitch marker from one knitting needle to the other. And then you can kind of see how there's that bar on that first round. So I want to keep on making sure I'm pulling that first stitch, which will be the knit stitch in that knit one purl one ribbing, really tight. And now I'm just going to go straight into knitting the next round. And I'm going to continue knitting round after round until this total cuff length is right around either an inch and a half or two inches. It's really up to your preference for how long you'd like the cuff. Now I just finished my ribbing and just in case you wanted to, I'm gonna show how I switch yarn colors in the middle of the sock. So I'm gonna be doing just plain stockinette in a self-striping yarn for the next section of my sock. So to break my yarn, I'm just going to cut my first yarn that I've already been knitting with. 
I leave around eight inches or so to weave in later. Thread it to the inside. Now I'm going to pick up my new color of yarn that I'm knitting with, and I want to start right at the beginning of a stripe. So I'm going to find right where the color changes. It's a little difficult to see, but that's right where the green starts. Again, thread the tail to the inside, and I'll cut that shorter later on. Now I'm just going to go right into the first stitch of a new round and pick up that new yarn right where the color changes, wrap it around, and now I'm just gonna begin, begin knitting round after round. So no more ribbing for me, just plain stockinette, knit round after round. And I'm gonna keep on doing this for the length that I'd like my cuff. Keep in mind that the total length of the sock, right, this will be the cuff portion, kind of like this stockinette that I'm about to do, and then this heel down here, depending on how many stitches you have, this is gonna add anywhere from an inch and a half to two inches. So keep in mind that you'll have this extra little distance down here once you finish just the plain stockinette. So I'm gonna continue knitting down the leg and then I'll come back and I'll show you how I add in the heel. Now I'm at the location where I want to add in my short row heel. So what I'm going to be doing first is I'm going to join my next yarn color. And when I do this for the heel, I'm not actually going to cut my other yarn. So my self shaping yarn that the main portion of the sock is in. I'm just going to leave this yarn to the side. So I'm going to take about six to eight inches of my new colorway for my heel and thread it to the inside of my sock. So now using that new heel color, I'm going to begin knitting across. And for my heel, I want to knit one stitch short of the halfway point. So for me, I have 68 stitches total. Halfway would be 34 stitches. So I'm going to knit 33 stitches with my heel yarn color. Okay, now that I've knit to one stitch before the halfway point, I'm gonna turn my work. And so the way the heel is worked is it's actually just worked back and forth across these same set of stitches. So we're essentially working flat. So the first side of the heel, what we do is we decrease inwards. So if we look at a heel here, so this is one that I already knit, so we have the cuff going up towards the heel. So the first thing is, is we're going to go in narrower and narrower until we reach a certain number of center stitches. So the way we can work narrower and narrower is first I'm going to do what's called making a double stitch. So I'm going to take this first stitch from my left knitting needle, slip it onto my right knitting needle. Now I'm going to take my working yarn, pull it up over to the back, then bring it in between the two knitting needles to the front again. So I just turned that one loop into now what looks like two loops. Now I'm gonna continue purling across until one stitch before my beginning of the round marker. Okay, now I'm all the way back over and I just worked all the way up until one stitch before my beginning of the round marker. So now I'm gonna turn my work. And now here again on this side, I need to make a double stitch. So the way I make a double stitch on my knit side is first I'm gonna bring my working yarn to the front. Then I'm gonna slip that first stitch from my left to right knitting needle. And I'm gonna take that working yarn and pull it up over to the back. So now we just turn that kind of like one stitch into two loops. Now we can begin the portion of this sock heel where we're just gonna keep on working back and forth, getting narrower and narrower. So we now have one double stitch on either side. So when I work across this next row, I'm gonna work all the way up until that double stitch that I already created over here. So I'm gonna work all the way up through and knit 
this last knit stitch before the double stitch. And if you want to see the numbers written out, all the numbers for the different stitch counts that I'm working across all these different rows are included in the pattern down below. So now I made it all the way up until where the next stitch is that double stitch on my left knitting needle. So I'm going to turn my work. And now just like I did on the last row, I'm going to start by making a double stitch on the purl side. So I'm going to slip my first stitch purl wise, pull that working yarn up over to the back, then in between the two knitting needles to the front again. Now I'm going to continue purling all the way across, all the way up until one stitch before where that previous double stitch that I made is. Now I'm going to turn my work and again on this side I'm going to start by making a double stitch on the knit side. So I'm going to bring my working yarn to the front, slip my first stitch, pull that working yarn up over to the back. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to continue working those two rows over and over again, becoming narrower and narrower until I reach that location that's specified in the pattern. Once I reach that location, I'll come back and I'll show you how to work the two center rows, which is where we actually begin knitting through all of those double stitches we've created on either side. And then we start increasing back outwards. So now I've just finished going across my last purl side row on the first side of my heel. So now I'm going to turn my work. And the first thing I'm going to do on my first center row is I'm going to make a double stitch. So I just brought my working yarn to the front. Slip that first stitch, pull it up over to the back. Now, once I've made that last double stitch, now I'm going to have an equal number of double stitches on each side. Now for these center rows, it also helps if you have two stitch markers available. That way we can mark these center portions of our heel and keep track of them. So what I'm going to do first here is I'm going to knit across my center stitches here. So all the way up until I reach my first double stitch. Now I'm going to place one of my stitch markers on my right knitting needle. And now I'm going to continue knitting across each one of these double stitches. And each time I work one of these double stitches, I want to knit both loops of that double stitch together. So I'm essentially turning them from double stitches back into single stitches. Now I just went all the way across all my double stitches, so now I'm going to knit one more stitch and I'm going to turn my work. Now first up, I'm going to make a double stitch. And now I'm going to purl all the way across each one of these stitches all the way up until my first stitch marker. Then I'm going to purl across all the center stitches here all the way up until I reach where my double stitches start on the other side. Now before I start purling across the other set of double stitches, I'm going to place my second stitch marker. So now I have two stitch markers marking off that center portion of the heel. And now I'm going to work across each one of these double stitches. And again, just like on the knit side, I want to purl both sides of each one of these double stitches together. Thank you. 
Now that I finished going across each one of those double stitches, I'm gonna purl one more stitch, which will be the one right before my beginning of the round marker. And I'm gonna turn my work. The first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a double stitch, bring my working yarn to the front. And because I joined a color here, it's gonna look really loose, but that's all right. So now we need a sit up to begin expanding outwards. So first what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna knit all the way across up until my second stitch marker here. Now I'm going to take off this stitch marker. I'm going to knit one more stitch and now I'm going to turn my work. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make a double stitch and now I'm going to purl all the way across until my remaining stitch marker. I'm gonna take off this stitch marker, purl one more stitch, and now turn my work. Now first thing I'm gonna do on the next row is I'm gonna make a double stitch. And now is where we can begin expanding outwards. So I have one double stitch on either side so let me show you the two rows that we're gonna be repeating over and over again to expand outwards. So first, I'm gonna knit all the way across to my existing double stitch, knit that double stitch together as a single stitch, then knit one more. Knitting one more after it. Now I'm gonna turn my work and I'm gonna make a double stitch. So now I've essentially just moved that double stitch out one stitch on that side. And now I'm gonna purl all the way across until my existing double stitch, purl that one together, then purl one more. I'm purling one more. And now I'm gonna turn my work. Now here again, I'd start off with a new double stitch, so I just moved it one further out. And now I'm gonna keep on repeating those two rows over and over again, moving the stitches outwards. And the exact stitch counts for each one of these as you continue moving it outwards is listed in the pattern down below. So now once I finish moving them outwards, I'll come back and I'll show you how I rejoin in the round using my main sock color to continue knitting all the way up the foot. So now I just finished going all the way across my last purl side row for my heel, and now I'm gonna turn my work. So here there's kind of like two options depending on whether or not you did your heel in a contrasting color. So if you didn't do your heel in a contrasting color and your heel was just the same color as the rest of your sock, all you have to do is bring your yarn to the front, make a double stitch, and then continue knitting all the way across the heel stitches, work each one of those double stitches together as a single stitch, and then work all the way across the front portion, and then just continue working round after round all the way up through the foot portion of the sock. Now, if you did do the heel in a contrasting color, what you're gonna do first is you're gonna cut your heel yarn, and I leave about six to eight inches here. Oh. 
And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna slide this double stitch that I currently have over here on the right side over to my left knitting needle. Now I'm gonna grab onto my main color yarn that I'm gonna be working for the foot portion of my sock. I'm gonna knit that first double stitch together, turning it back into a single stitch. Now next up, I'm gonna take that yarn tail that I just cut, bring it to the front of my work, and then pull it back over to the back. So I essentially just created a double stitch. Now I'm gonna knit both sides of that double stitch together with my foot color. And then I like to make sure I just retuck that yarn tail back inside the sock so I don't accidentally start knitting with it. And now I'm gonna continue knitting all the way across the heel. And again, once I reach that other side, I'm gonna work each one of those double stitches back together as a single stitch, and then all the way across the front portion of my sock and continue working round after round. Now it is important to keep in mind, either way you did it, whether or not there was a contrasting color for the heel or not, how much room you wanna leave for the toe. So I typically leave about one and a half to two inches here. So I think this one probably is almost exactly two inches. Let's measure it. Yeah, so that is just about exactly two inches for the toe portion. So you wanna stop knitting when you're just about two inches short of that toe. Now I'm back at the beginning of my round and I'm ready to put in the toe. So here is where I'm gonna be needing my long circular knitting needle. So first up, I'm gonna take off my stitch marker because I don't actually need stitch markers anymore when I'm working magic loop. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take one of my circular knitting needle points and I'm gonna begin slipping each one of the stitches from my short circular onto this longer circular. And I'm gonna do this for half of my total number of stitches. I have a total of 68 stitches, so for me that'll be 34. And I'm just slipping each one as if I was purling it. Okay, so now I have half my stitches on my longer circular. So now I'm gonna grab onto that longer circular knitting needle point I'm gonna pull on that knitting needle until the stitches end up on the opposite knitting needle point. Don't go all the way to the tip, just leave them a little bit further back so that they don't accidentally slide off. I'm gonna flip my work so I have the shorter circular knitting needle closest to me. And now again, with my free circular knitting needle, my longer circular knitting needle point, I'm gonna start sliding the second half of the stitches onto this knitting needle. Now when I finish, there'll be no stitches remaining on my short circular. So I can just put that one right to the side. And now I'm gonna flip my work one more time. So now when I look at my knitting needles, I have both knitting needles pointed over towards the right. Each half of my stitches is up towards the knitting needle point. And my working yarn is coming out what I would call my back knitting needle or the one further away from me. So now I'm all ready to begin working magic loop. So I'm perfectly set up. I have half, stitches, half of my stitches on each knitting needle. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull this back knitting needle towards the right and begin knitting with that. So first, I am gonna knit my toe in a different color. So I need to break my yarn and rejoin a new color. Of course, if you're only knitting with one color, you don't need to do this extra step. Now first up, I'm just gonna knit one full round. So now that we're working in magic loop, what I mean when I say knit one full round is I have to knit all the way across my first knitting needle, then turn my work and knit all the way across my second knitting needle, then that makes up one round. So to begin knitting, 
I'm going to take my back knitting needle or the one furthest away from me that the working yarn is coming out of. And I'm going to pull that one towards the right so that those back stitches end up on the cord. Over here on the left, I want to make sure I still have plenty of cord and that the two sides don't join. And now I'm going to take my knitting needle and I'm going to go right into that first stitch on my front knitting needle as if to knit, wrap my yarn around, pull through. And I'm going to keep on knitting all the way across this knitting needle until there are no more stitches left. Now that I've just finished going across that front knitting needle, I'm going to turn my work so that my one knitting needle in my work is now pointing over towards the right and I'm going to thread back in my second knitting needle point. I'm going to move my work, working yarn to the back here. And so I just worked across the side with the blue stitches. So now next up, I have to work across the side, the second side of my work. So when I do this, the first thing I want to check is that my working yarn is coming up and then draped over my back knitting needle. That'll prevent me from ending up with any extra yarn overs at the beginning. Now again, I'm going to take my one with the working yarn coming out of it, or the knitting needle furthest away from me. I'm going to pull it towards the right so that the back stitches end up on the cord. Still have plenty of loop over there on the left. And now I'm going to work across the second half of my stitches. Now that I just finished that side of my work, again, I'm going to turn my work so that my knitting needle is pointed over towards the right. I'm going to thread back in my second knitting needle. And now I'm all set up to work my next magic loop round. So I just worked one full round just knitting. Now next up, I'm going to work one of my decrease rounds. So what's nice about magic loop is my stitches are already perfectly divided in half. So I'm going to work one decrease at the beginning of the first half, one decrease at the end of the first half, then the same thing on the opposite side. So first up, I'm going to knit the first stitch. Next up, I'm going to work a slip slip knit. So I'm going to slip the first stitch as if to knit, slip the second stitch as if to knit, pass them both back over to my left knitting needle, and now knit them together through the back loop. So a slip slip knit creates the left leaning decrease. Now I'm going to knit until three stitches remain on this front knitting needle. Now with three stitches remaining, I'm going to work a knit two together. So I'm going to go into the next two stitches on my left knitting needle as if to knit at the same time, wrap my yarn around, pull through, knit the final stitch. Now I'm going to turn my work, thread back in my second knitting needle, and on this side I'm going to work that exact same thing. So I'm going to pull my back knitting needle to the right, knit the first stitch, work a slip slip knit, Knit until three stitches remain. Now I'm going to work a knit two together, then knit the final stitch. So now that I've worked the decreases across both halves of my stitches, that makes up one full decrease round. After each decrease round, I'm going to work a certain number of knit rounds, and I'm going to keep on working all the way up through my toe as described in the pattern down below. So once I finish working all the way up through my toe, the last thing I'm going to show you coming back here is how to work the Kitchener stitch up at the top of the toe.
Now the last step is gonna to be to do the Kitchener stitch. So first I'm gonna cut my yarn and I leave about 18 inches or so. Now I'm gonna thread my tapestry needle with the yarn. So the first thing I always double check is just to make sure that both sides have the exact same number of stitches, which in my case they do. And so now what I'm gonna show you is first, there's a two step setup and then there's a four stitch repeat. So first for the setup, I'm gonna take my tapestry needle through the first stitch on the front knitting needle as if to purl but I don't actually slide it off of that front knitting needle. Now I'm gonna go under that front knitting needle and then go through the first stitch on my back knitting needle knitwise. And now I don't slide that stitch off the knitting needle. So that was my setup. Now there's a four stitch repeat. So first I'm gonna go through the first stitch on my front knitting needle knitwise. Now I am going to slide that stitch off of my front knitting needle. Now I'm going to go through my new first stitch on my front knitting needle purl wise. I'm going to leave that stitch on my front knitting needle. Now I'm going to go through my first stitch on my back knitting needle purl wise. I'm going to slip that stitch off of my back knitting needle. Now I'm going to go through my new first stitch on my back knitting needle knitwise, leave that stitch on my back knitting needle. So I'm just going to show it one more time zoomed in and then I'll put the text up on the screen. So first step, first stitch on the front knitting needle knitwise, slide that stitch off, new first stitch on the front knitting needle purlwise, Leave that stitch on. First stitch on the back knitting needle, purl wise. Slip that stitch off. New first stitch on the back knitting needle, knit wise. Leave that stitch on. So now I'm going to put that four stitch repeat up on the screen and you're going to continue going all the way across doing as many of the steps at the end as you can to get rid of all of those stitches on your knitting needles. So now that I've finished, I'm going to take my tail that's still on my tapestry needle and I'm going to thread it to the inside of my sock in right in that corner where it's coming out of. So I always try and kind of see where it's going to be the most hidden. I'm going to go right. I always just kind of move it around to see where it's going to be the most hidden. So I think I'm going to go for right there. That looks pretty good. Now I'm going to flip my sock inside out. And now I do tie knots in my knitting, especially when it comes to socks, because I want to make sure these are really nice and durable. So now I'm going to pick a piece or a part of a stitch right next to where I am. And I'm just going to tie a double knot. Now I'm going to weave in that end by just following along a stitch in this area. Okay, once I've weaved it in a little ways, I'm going to cut my yarn. And now I'm going to move on to the next end I have to weave in. Thank you so much for joining me today as we worked socks using 9-inch circular knitting needles. I hope you found this video helpful. If you have any comments or questions, please feel free to leave them down below. And if you're new to my channel, make sure you hit that red subscribe button before you leave, and also the thumbs up button. I'll see you next time.